Hello, welcome to another episode of Livestream Insiders. It is episode 130, and uh, that's uh, appropriate because, of course, what we do is we always start the clock and we give ourselves a 30-minute rundown for the last seven days of live streaming news uh, right here on Livestream Insiders. And uh, my co-host is uh, Krishna Day. Hello, good evening. Great to have you back, Peter. It's a challenge managing a show all on your own, as you know. Anyway, Peter is back with us and we've got lots of news for you again this week in terms of some of the latest updates with applications and tools. One particular update has got me pretty excited because it's actually about how we can stream across multiple different platforms, but I'm going to be talking about that a little later on. If you're new to hear us in terms of uh, live stream insiders. We've been together, Peter and I, for almost three years now, and we actually love live streaming. We love to be able to share tips, tools, technology, case studies. We don't try to sell you anything. We just want to give you 30 minutes, sometimes 40 minutes, sometimes even a bit longer, but we try to keep it to about 30 minutes, hence the timer going off there from Peter, to try to keep us on track. Because from my perspective, I like to look at it from a brand perspective and a business perspective. And Peter's got exceptional experience in terms of broadcasting. And so he's live streaming from his mobile device, in fact, for the organization he works for. So we'll come on to uh, questions that you might have for us later on. We do encourage you to post your questions. And if you enjoy the show, please do share it. This show is originating on Livestream Insiders. You might see it being shared elsewhere. For example, we repurpose our content over onto YouTube afterwards, and you'll see bits and pieces of it on Twitter and also on other pages as well. But more of that a little later on. I'm going to pass it back to you, Peter, for our first story. Absolutely. So this week we're going to be talking about some updates to Twitter and also YouTube as well. And uh, also about uh, uh, some advice from Krishna about scheduling and hosting live meetings, which is another form of live streaming, of course. Uh, we've got a little bit of uh, advice and some help from Facebook to get more viewers to watch your live stream. Some uh, production help from uh, the BBC. And also we're going to start off with some updates to Twitter. So uh, uh, apologies again for not being around last week, but uh, I was unwell and uh, uh, gradually getting back to uh, normal health uh, this this week. So uh, thanks, Krishna, for holding the fort last week. So we'll start off with that news from Twitter. And it's a uh, it's a new feature. And it's uh, how you can restrict how many people watch your live stream. Now, that sounds a little bit odd, doesn't it? You want to restrict the people who, you, who can see your live stream? Well, the number, actually, it's all about who will uh, what country, what part of the world will see your live stream? Because there's some geo restrictions uh, from Twitter that have been put into place if you're using their producer um, uh, part of the uh, of, of, of Twitter live. It's at a country level and you can choose who your uh, live video stream is actually distributed to. So first of all, before we go through and before we show you actually how you do that. Let's just think about why you may want to do that. Well, of course, if you're on the producer scheme, then it may be that uh, you are doing it kind of professionally. So there may be some rights or copyright implications, something like that, perhaps for some kind of uh, sports initiative. Uh, because uh, therefore they may be selling the rights to one particular domain, one particular part of the world. And you may have one of those domains, what you may have one of those rights, and other people may have rights for streaming that or showing that in another part of the world. I thought that was perhaps quite obvious, but let's dig down a little bit further and come up with some more uh, reasons. Well, it may be that you're a small offering. It may be that you're a small business. It may be that restrictions are different in different parts of the world. So you may not actually want people, if you're in London, to see uh, your, your particular stream, your particular offer, if they're in another part of Europe, or indeed if they are somewhere else such as America. You may just not want to restrict that 
you, excuse me, you may not want them to see that particular offer. That may be because you don't want to be able to fulfill offers and start talking about different postage rates and things like that and shipping uh, regulations. So you may not want them to see it in the first place. It may be something that isn't appropriate for their particular culture. So it may be that you're talking about, I don't know, guns and weapons in the United States, and you may not actually want to be talking about that elsewhere around the world. It may be that you are in London and you're talking about some uh, alcohol. So you may want to restrict the kind of people and the kind of societies and the kind of religious uh, parts of the world where that wouldn't perhaps be appropriate for them to see. Not perhaps because you want to restrict them seeing it, but you don't want to necessarily offend people unnecessarily. So it could be that. It could be that you're in London and you have different restrictions apart around different parts of the United Kingdom. For example, there may be different rules and regulations in Northern Ireland. Very often that can be the case. So you may want to then restrict some of what you say and how you say it. So that could be different customs. It could be literally uh, different customs uh, as, as in uh, cultural uh, reasons. It could be different customs as in how you're able to ship items through different customs areas. It could be perhaps different information that you would need to include in what it is that you are selling. And also it may be purely because you want to give a more dedicated program, a dedicated show with dedicated information to different time zones. So you may want to speak specifically to Europeans as they wake up and then maybe do a different show for Americans when they wake up. And there may be a different show to Australasia when they wake up and talk specifically to them and talk about their use case studies about how they could get your particular product, the kind of uh, talk about their currency and their shipping details specifically to them. So it may be that you're doing a series of different shows depending on the market. Also, of course, what it means is that with better targeting, you're more likely to reduce you're trolling as well because you're talking specifically to the people who are more likely to be interested in the product that you are talking about at the time that they are likely to want to be interested in it. OK, so how do you go about doing this? Well, if you're a producer, as I say, it comes onto the producer tab of, uh, of Twitter Live slash Periscope. You go to your media studio and uh, then you can go to the uh, content restrictions. We've probably got a slide for that, I don't know. And then you can either include or exclude particular countries. It's quite easy. It's uh, very obvious there when you go to it, as we can see those geo restrictions there under content restrictions. And you can either choose to include countries or exclude countries. So that's uh, obviously depending on which is easier for, for you to do, the number of countries that fall into each of those categories, either include or exclude. And it's as easy as that. And the drop down is pretty straightforward and seems to have a pretty comprehensive list of those countries involved. So I thought, Krishna, that was a really interesting way for uh, you to uh, have lots of different um, uh, kind of demographics, if you like, so you can have Yes, it is about copyright or rights restrictions, but also I think to have different programs for different parts of the world. You can you can change what it is that you say, how you say it. You can have different user case studies. You can talk about different price points. Uh, you can include different shipping information, uh, perhaps even talk in different languages if you are so skilled for your different markets. Yes, that means that you may be doing a very a very similar show three or four or five times. But of course, each of those different audiences will feel a little bit more special than just doing one show at one particular time and kind of casting your net really wide. Yeah, in fact, when you were talking about, let's say, the UK and you're talking about alcohol, as you know, Peter, I spent a long time in my corporate mm. career for a FTSE 100 company who's very strong in alcoholic beverages, that is their business. And the key thing there for me is the fact of legal drinking age. 
So you may not want to, you know, again, there's restrictions about what you can talk about, um, but certainly you'd want to have, um, bear that in mind in terms of requirements, in terms of whatever industry you're in. So obviously that all takes place. But legal drinking age is different, for example, in the States than it is in the UK or Ireland. So that might be another reason that you want to restrict it. Now, you can do this through um, the Periscope, sorry, you can do this through Twitter Media Studio, as you said. Um, I didn't check it out in terms of location, so great point that you make in terms of Northern Ireland, because I know it's country specific. So I'm not sure, because I haven't checked it out yet, whether you can go down as far as, you know, the Republic of Ireland being different from different England. Different regions, yeah. Um, so that's, that's the key thing. I don't know if you had a chance to check that out, have you? I, I haven't. The point I was making was that because there are restrictions even within a country, let alone between countries, that you know that this would be something that you could bear in mind when you're pitching to your different audiences. Yeah. But I think it's a I think it's a fantastic feature. It's a long time coming. We've had that ability in terms of on Facebook for a long time, um, and so because Twitter's making this bigger move for um, you know kind of live video, I think it's great to have it. I've got another tip later on though, which I think will be also. A a supporting tip around that whole thing about geography and language um, and so I think that's it's a really good point that, that you were referencing there and and of course actually it makes it easier for us being a smaller country to include or exclude other countries if you're in the United States and it doesn't actually have a drop down that includes the different states you're broadcasting to everyone essentially in the US then because of the different laws and regulations in each state that may in fact cause more of a problem for you broadcasting there where you can just choose US rather than us so uh, yeah that could be interesting whether you could then subdivide that uh, to uh, different parts of different nations within a country or different states within a country as you point out yeah and Facebook's had that kind of feature for quite some time and it's great that we've now got that in terms of on Twitter. Let us know in the comments if you actually would find that helpful for many of the reasons that actually that Peter was talking about. I've actually just uh, been looking at comments, really appreciate you all being with us here live um, and um, those of you who are watching on replay, we love you too as well. Um, so uh, let's have a look. So we've got Ruth uh, popping in to say hi and Eileen and Barbara and Neil. Um, so a number of different places already reflected there. And I saw Len a little bit earlier on popping in too. So the next story that we've got for you is something if you're a YouTuber. So Eileen, I know, is huge on YouTube. This might be something, Eileen, that you actually want to uh, check out. Um, and it's a platform I actually hadn't come across before. Also, if you're using Twitch, you may well have come across this. Now, as you may recall, if you've joined us before, Every time that we actually have a show, we curate all of the links um, and all of the resources are going to be available for you after the show. So I've got the information here about the original article that was posted on VentureBeat. And also I've actually got the information for you in terms of the platform itself. So the platform is called Stream Elements. As I said, i would not come across this, but I'm, I have got an account on Twitch. I just don't use it very much. But actually, it's one of the tools that uh, people who are live streaming on Twitch are using in terms of adding additional features to their stream. And I'm going to come to a couple of uh, a couple of features that might be of interest to you. So they've been actually um, growing that business for quite some time, and they've had some requests by YouTubers in terms of being able to actually integrate. So it's cloud-based, and you can bring different features in. So the article goes on and says that um, the uh, chief executive of the organization um, had been looking for um, different, sorry, had been listening to YouTubers saying, we really want to ha have your tools. And now they've actually got an affirmative answer for them to be able to have them. So the platform again is called Stream Elements. And they've got lots of different things that you can add to your stream. A couple of them that I want to highlight for you, which I know are of importance and interest to many people here. We've talked about monetizing your live streams many times. And one of the things that you can do is you can add, in fact, a PayPal um, payment feature. So I know lots of people are looking at how can I take payments in terms of or how can I monetize my live streams? 
in different platforms of different ways. Well, Stream Elements allows you to integrate with PayPal, which I thought was going to be really quite interesting. And uh, therefore, that is uh, available for you in terms of having different uh, tipping presets. Now, they've got other overlays that you might be used to, um, that are things that, um, for example, like lower thirds and so on. But the second thing that caught my attention, which again, we're actually seeing people using here on Facebook, um, but also on other platforms, is chatbots. So actually, it's got an integrated chatbot platform. So the reason I wanted to bring this to you today is that Stream Elements, if you are using YouTube, it may be something that you want to check out for those of you who are independent. Not necessarily, I'm, I'm saying from a large organization, it might not be the way that you want to use YouTube and, and live video there. But I do think those two particular things in terms of the way of taking payments and tips, um, in, integrating uh, PayPal, and also the chatbot feature just might be worthwhile you exploring. And let me just see if anybody is here and is uh, using um, it. So if, I, if you're using it, oh, okay, yes. So Eileen, you're saying it's uh, fantastic on Twitch. Um, yes, absolutely. And now it's available for those of you who are using YouTube. So uh, do let us know if you test it out in terms of using that platform. It definitely looks like one to be considering if you're using YouTube Live and of course Twitch Live as well. And thanks to you for watching, whether you're watching live or whether you're watching our recorded show. Uh, really appreciate you being there. And also thanks to Krishna for compiling this week's notes as well, uh, as I was, uh, I, was uh, I was on my sick bed. But another production tool which may be of help for you this week uh, and comes courtesy of the BBC. Well, you know, the BBC has been around for 90 years. And it's uh, obviously a well-known British broadcasting uh, company. And uh, yes, disclaimer, I do work for them, but it's a uh, fantastic uh, organization. Uh, and it is uh, well known around the world, of course, for its broadcasting, both on radio and on TV. And from its archives comes something that you now have access to. And that is 16,000 sound effects. So this could really save you money. And it could maybe enhance your live streams, but perhaps more specifically, it would enhance your pre-recorded videos. But certainly if you're talking about a, uh, a, about a particular topic and you need a sound or some kind of historic recording, then uh, in, to save you searching around for it in lots of other sites, 16,000 of these at your fingertips, really easy to download. And as I say, they are all free. Um, from from 90 years of background from the BBC, from drama recordings, from historic recordings, all sorts of things, and you can download those in WAV format. Okay, so there are some T's and C's. We'll come to those in a few moments' time. Let me give you an example. The collection includes audio clips such as South American parrot talking and screeching. Don't know why you might use that, but you know what? It does strike me that there is a very well-known social media website and series of podcasts which kind of goes through a, uh, a jungle theme every week, the social media examiner. So uh, it could be something that uh, if you want to uh, pretend you're in some kind of jungle and, 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 you know, go along that particular format. Morocco, Marrakesh Market Square with music and distant traffic, as well as charming local fare like uh, various Westminster Abbey bells and one lorry passing slowly. And it also includes sound effects created specifically for the BBC for some of their drama or indeed comedy productions like The Goons, which I don't know whether you're aware of back in the 40s and the 50s. The Goons with uh, uh, Peter Sellers and uh, Spike Milligan and people like that as well. So these terms and conditions, they are very, very readable. Um, they're almost quite fun to read, actually. I was looking through those a little bit earlier on. They're hardly small print at all. It's just a couple of pages, but essentially free for personal and educational purposes. But do read those uh, license uh, details through on the home page. So what I did, Krishna, was I went to, because we are live stream insiders, I put in the search term stream, and there are 58 different entries for various different kinds of streams, from rivers to babbling brooks. And also I put in, well, we're live stream insiders. I put in 
the word inside. There are 45 entries for things which were recorded inside various places, including inside a US World War II bomber, inside a human body, would you believe, the sounds of inside a fish market and inside a lion's cage. I try to think what else I could come up with that kind of fits in with what we talk about, periscope. And you know what? There are sound effects of a periscope going up and a periscope going down from a 1960s P-class submarine. But then I had a bit of a brainwave, nothing to do with what you and I talk about on a Sunday night. But you know what? I started off my broadcasting career in hospital radio, which are little radio stations that we have in the United Kingdom, which broadcast to hospitals, you know, to keep patients amused and that kind of thing. And when I was spinning the discs at the very start of my broadcasting career, I actually uh, put in. Ah, I've lost it. I had it all lined up. Here we go. Let's put it in again. Um, I had a, a little sound effect which I bought from the BBC, because uh, what they're able to do is to uh, uh, put the sound effects on LP, which is what it was at the time, and it was this. It was from the Radiophonic Workshop, a kind of electronic workshop where they came up with all sorts of sound effects, and this is the Radiophonic Stomach, including explosions, whooshes, bubbling, and a belch. So let me hold this up to my microphone that I've got here and hopefully this will play and you'll be able to hear the inside of someone's upset stomach dramatised by the Radiophonic Workshop. Here we go. Which is kind of quite fun. Uh, so there you go. A whole load of 16,000 sound effects courtesy of the BBC. How can you download them? Obviously, that link is in our show notes as usual. Interesting, isn't it? I do want to just say, as I said before, in terms of uh, lots of resources that Peter's shared before with us on other episodes where we've talked about not, um, audio that we can use and copyright issues. And he's got lots of resources in his book, the live stream handbook. Um, but uh, just be careful in terms of if you're going to use it commercially, that's not what they're there for. Um, it is for lots of other things from research to education to personal use. I think it's fantastic, though, to have access to that resource. I remember if you're on Facebook and you're streaming here, then you can actually use the different resources that Facebook have put together as well. Again, we've talked about that previously. I actually also just wanted to say thank you to everybody who's watching. Some of you might be watching on my Krishna Day page. Um, and some might be watching on Peter's live stream handbook page, and some of you might be watching on live stream insiders. So we're doing our best to try to see your comments there. And I can see some interesting questions coming through. Thanks, Francesco, for joining us. You want to? You got some questions about mobile live streaming? You're going to be contacting us later to uh, ask about that. So we really appreciate you joining us here live or for the replay. One of the ways that I use live video all the time is for meetings. And that be, might be um, an onboarding meeting prior to meeting face-to-face uh, -face with a client. It could be actually delivering content in terms of education and workshops. And I do that um, using tools like BlueJeans, which we're using here today. But what caught my attention this week was a platform that has seems to be pretty well established. I haven't personally had time to test it out, but they do have a free trial. And I wanted to let, let you know about it. And I'll tell you one key reason why you might want to actually explore it. Because I know that many people are using live video. Um, but one of the things I find with meetings is that you need to make sure that there's a way for people to easily get into contact with you, easily schedule a meeting. So I've got processes set up that make it really, really easy for people to get time in my calendar. And I do that through a particular calendar tool. What caught my attention, though, with this particular platform is the fact that they've got the calendar built in. So for me, I actually have my calendar session, but I also link up in there, actually, for example, using BlueJeans so people can join via their mobile app or they can join on desktop. But this particular platform that I actually want to tell you about is called 24 Sessions. So I'd never come across it before, but I was taking a good look 
at the platform. Now they've got different price points. It goes from 21 US dollars to 45 US dollars a month, depending on the different features that you want to have access to. But I think this would be really interesting for some of you who are in larger organizations, for example, because you can do things like you can have it 100% white labeled. That means none of their branding will show up. I know that's really important for many of the people that I work with. You can even change the, the color of it. You can even change the, the email domain for in, in their premium planet as well. So the emails look like they're coming from yourself, not the platform. Um, you can create booking forms. You can sync it with your calendar. For example, I use Office 365, and that's what I link up with my um, tool that I use for my calendar that I actually invite people to meetings in with. Or you can link it to uh, um, Google Calendar, um, and you can link it to um, Outlook as well. So many different platforms you can do. You can also have a recording. I find that invaluable, having recording of my sessions that might be particularly in terms of when I deliver delivering training sessions, um, and then people can have an archive of it. So you can do all of that. It integrates, those of you who are in larger organizations using customer relationship management tools, it integrates with Salesforce, it integrates with HubSpot and other platforms. It's also got support on Android and iOS. You've got analytics there, and you can do, do screen sharing and file sharing. I think this, if you're looking at live video in terms of having an integrated platform that allows you to t allow people to take a booking, schedule time in your calendar, you know, this could be used, let's say you're in, you know, doing customer service calls. Um, this might be an easy platform for people to actually look at using for that. I'm seeing increasingly that kind of thing on websites, which I talk about in the workshops that I deliver. In fact, talking about this platform in terms of uh, it being possible for you to use it, 24 sessions, I'm doing a workshop for PR professionals. I work a lot with the PR Institute of Ireland, and we've got a whole day on live video. So I've curated this for them. And so I thought, well, you know, as I'm going to be talking about this as a platform for them to consider using in terms of for their client meetings or other things they're looking to do, um, you actually might want to have a look at this in terms of Krishna, share it on live stream insiders. Now, one thing I should say, and we probably need to have a disclaimer from the end of May on any of our content here, is you know you need to do your own due diligence in terms of is it GDPR uh, compliant because obviously you're collecting email addresses there. So there's you know that's legislation that applies to anybody who's actually doing business with people who are in Europe, where of course Peter and I are. Um, and so you'd need to do your due diligence. I haven't checked them out as far as saying okay, tell me your GDPR policy. Um, but that goes for any tool. And I think uh, those of you who are working in terms of putting GDPR in place, doesn't matter where you are in the world, if you're dealing with clients and dealing with uh, staff who are actually, or, or uh, any platform, in fact, that's based in, in Europe, you need to be fully au fait with what's going on there. And that comes into place from the 25th of May. But for me, it definitely looks worth a second glance. That's 24sessions.com. That link will be in the show notes a little later on. And uh, certainly that's something that uh, Eileen is, uh, has commented on, that she uh, congratulates you on a, on a great find there, Krishna. So that's something that she's particularly interested in. So uh, uh, thanks very much indeed for your comments there, Eileen, and everyone else who's watching, of course, coming to the end of the show. One more piece from me. And uh, that is uh, from, uh, from Facebook. And uh, they are letting... Um, they are putting out a, a bit of a test, to be honest, about... Uh, how to get more people to watch watch shows, if that kind of makes sense, the watch shows. And they're going to be doing some, some trailers to drive more people to actually consume the content that is there. Now, Facebook already boosts watch shows in people's news feeds because it's something they're particularly keen on. And of course, it being video, which they're particularly keen on as well. And of course, they want more people to stay within the Facebook family. And now they're going to try and convert that, well, I suppose you could call it just kind of awareness about what is going on into intentional viewing because they're going to be starting to run trailers. In fact, my understanding is they've already started doing that in regards to kind of snippets of the program which will play automatically when posts actually come into view. And then what you do is you tap to watch it. It's a small rollout at the moment and um, 
they're testing various kinds of formats. Those trailers can be any kind of duration. But I suppose what they're also doing at the same time is trying to work out whether those pre-roll adverts are going to be something that people will sit through or whether they're going to put them off completely from even doing that and watching what's the other side of it. So I don't know, it's not necessarily, it's kind of the antithesis, isn't it, of if you watch it, they will come because, or if you, if you build it, they will come, I should say, because just because someone has done a program, will people actually sit through a pre-roll advert to actually see what's the other side of it? And also for their part as well, they're not only making that more available, but also they're throwing some of their own resources behind a new strategy, a new campaign, more marketing, to actually raise awareness of watch as well, because I really don't think that many people are aware of its existence to begin with. So they're, as I say, going to be putting a bit of money, some resources, some, uh, some members of staff behind marketing, the watch feature, so some trailers, some campaigns to make it much more obvious what it's all about. So that when one of these uh, adverts, one of these um, uh, trailers actually pops into your news feed, then you're more likely to know what it's all about and to actually sit through that trailer or to tap and watch the actual program itself. So some, uh, some more kind of stuff that Facebook is doing to try and integrate with the news feed you're already getting. And a final story from me. In fact, there used to be somebody on TV, didn't there, Peter? You probably remember who it is better than I do, and some, you know, and and finally from them. Um, but the final story today is something that I'm really, really excited about, um, and that's because I use a product called Vmix, and I would often hear about people talking about paid for platforms such as Wirecast which is great, and then talk about other platforms which are only you know, available for people who are using Macs. Um, I definitely think that if you're using a PC, it's worthwhile having a look at vMix. They've got a 60-day 60 60 trial. And I have to tell you, it's, they're, whilst they're an Australian-based company, which may mean that some of the customer service is a little bit out of sync for those of you, for example, who are in the US. Absolutely brilliant customer service is my experience of them. But why was I excited? Because I watched a video of what they're talking about in their next beta. And I want to take you through a few of the options. So you can have a watch of their replay of it. Um, so you'll be able to get access to this um, in terms of when it's available. Um, beta testing is probably going to be in the next couple of weeks. And then it should be available for all of us. But let me tell you why I'm particularly excited about vMix. It doesn't work for you if you're on a Mac, I'm sorry. But if you're on a PC, it's definitely worth having a look at. And they've got lots of different options for price point. But here are the things that I'm excited about. Live streaming in three different resolutions, sorry, not resolutions, in three different formats. You will be able to do portrait, landscape as it currently, and also square. That could be really, really interesting for you to experiment with, particularly in terms of getting that Facebook newsfeed filled up. I know there are other platforms such as Ecamm Live, where if you're using a Mac, you can do square live streams. I think this is definitely one that's worthwhile you experimenting with. So different aspect ratios is one of the things that you can look at. The next thing is you can do three independent streams. You can do three streams at the moment, but they start and stop at the same time. This I think will be fantastic. And do let me know in the comments, and Peter, perhaps you can watch out to see if anybody knows of other platforms that do this. But why is independent streaming of actually interest and of value? Let's say, for example, you want to do a teaser live stream that actually goes over onto one particular platform. Let's say you are trying to grow your YouTube audience. And there's lots of evidence at the moment that live streaming on YouTube um, actually builds that audience there. So let's say you've got a great audience on Facebook, but you actually want to funnel them across onto YouTube. You could actually do that in terms of having a slightly different stream that goes out to Facebook that actually then you can actually stop that when you want and then direct people over to watch the rest of the show over on YouTube. And let's say you're doing something that's say premium and you want to deliver that to a different platform again, 
then you can actually have that as the follow-up or you might have a show archive sorry a, a show uh, after show talk uh, after show chat and so you might deliver that in a different place now of course remember if you're streaming onto facebook at the moment lots of platforms are affected in terms of not being able to stream into groups still so you need to obviously just check that out i haven't obviously test, tested the beta i've literally just watched the video that they've uh, produced in the last day or so about what's coming so i think that's really really interesting the fact that you'll be able to have one stream that's set up but you can actually have three different streams if you see what i mean so you can actually deliver something slightly different to those platforms the other thing i should say because of that aspect ratio they've also got something that i know that the bbc for example they have their own video apps for mobile journalists and they actually have safe zones so for example if you're a mobile journalist like peter is and you want to create some content but you know that that content is also going to go on let's say onto facebook you want to have that let's say maybe a square format of that content right in the middle so you can see where you're positioned those of you who are using um, be live TV, you'll know that in terms of if you have uh, three people on the screen, for example, there's actually a safe zone about you can position yourself, let's say, as the guest, so you know you're going to be on camera, you're not going to be offside or another. And so they've got safe zones that are actually appearing. Um, I'm going to show the, um, Peter in just in a moment because he's actually can show us uh, here in terms of um, what it looks like in terms of in the app there that he uses for the BBC. So you can see that safe zone that appears so that if Peter wanted to be there and let's say uh, recapturing that content, let's say to be played onto either broadcast media or for example, it might be on Instagram that you might want to repurpose that content or onto a Facebook story or an Instagram story, then he's actually got that safe zone there that he knows that he can watch out for in terms of where he's positioned. Thank you so much for sharing us that, but a little bit behind the scenes in terms of uh, what's possible there for, for uh, the BBC and the special apps that they have, because of course their journalists are creating content and then that's going on to traditional media, not just also onto web and also onto social media. The other thing that I think is really, really interesting, we were talking earlier, Peter was telling us about um, the things that are happening in terms of um, the live streaming with uh, Twitter and he was you know, putting a, a business case and a, a case there for why you might want to stream differently in different markets. And one of the things he was saying there in terms of perhaps in terms of different things that you might be showing, um, different legislation and so on. Well, what about different languages? And so I think this is really fantastic that you could actually have a second audio input into your stream. So let's say you were a journalist like Peter and you want to stream something into two different dif different locations. You could actually have, let's say, a narration in English, but you could actually have a second audio coming in that actually, let's say, he was using the example of Spanish. So you could have a second audio. You might have the same visuals, but actually you can have a second audio that comes in. I think that's fantastic. Um, lots of other features that are coming in as well. Uh, professional color correction. I'm not going to go through all of them, but one that gets a big thumbs up from me. And that's because I don't know if you've ever done something like you're preparing for an event or you're preparing to deliver a, a, a program or you're delivering a workshop. And now, of course, it could be you're delivering a live video piece of content as well. Those of us who are on PCs know that sometimes those Windows updates just start automatically, close down your computer, and you might be down for 20 minutes, 40 minutes, depends on how big an update is. Well, what happens now within vMix in this new beta, so it's beta, the version is 21, actually they're disabling Windows updates when running vMix. So if you've got a long live stream that's gonna go on for four hours, let's say, onto Facebook, or eight hours if it's a, a live event that you're sharing over onto YouTube and you're actually streaming the whole of, whole of a conference, the last thing you want is your computer to go into update mode. And that's been actually stopped now with this new update from vMix. I just think the vMix team do a fantastic job in terms of constantly tweaking, constantly updating. They've got a live stream that they do every single month. You can catch up with uh, tips and how to use it and all the updates. 
But I have to say, I'm particularly excited about that dual language. I think that would be really powerful for people, the different aspect ratios as well. And disabling that Windows update, that gets a big thumbs up from me. Absolutely. It does sound as though it's attention to detail. And yes, yeah, certainly I'm thinking, you know, if there was a, uh, a major news story, let's talk about, I don't know, a resignation of a president or a, or a royal wedding or something of that nature. Then uh, if you were an international news organization, then, of course, you could have the same pictures, but you could have one commentary perhaps in in English, but then if you were streaming to your Facebook page, which is to do with, uh, uh, say, BBC uh, South America, for example, uh, then you could have a Spanish or a Portuguese uh, commentary instead, and you'd still be taking the same the same pictures, and also cut down on the amount of work that you're doing to get those two different productions out. And uh, as you'll see there, uh, Christian, only looking down, then uh, you, you'll see that L Lurio Petrucci uh, also uses vMix, who's uh, uh, certainly very, very uh, big in the uh, in the live streaming world. I know she's been out and about. Uh, I think she had a weekend away this weekend, staying in a barn. I seem to have uh, saw her, her live stream a little bit earlier on, so I hope she had a, a fine weekend. Um, yeah, her and her organization were actually vMix users, and they moved over to, sorry, they were a Wirecast move, users and they moved over to vMix last last year, which I thought was quite interesting in terms of them making that shift, having been you know, long, long time users of uh, Wirecast. Believe me, both platforms are fantastic. Um, vMix is perhaps a little bit more affordable for some people. Um, and I definitely think the 60 day trial is worthwhile exploring if you're looking for more premium tools. We've covered lots of low cost tools as well over the time. In fact, I think two episodes ago, we covered lots of low cost tools as well. But if you're looking for something that gives you some of these additional features, definitely worth looking at. And what I particularly like about it versus some other live streaming platforms, the free version is not watermarked. So you can test your heart's content. If you get comfortable, you can start going live onto whatever platforms you want, and you don't have to worry about any watermark from them. I think they just do a great job and worth. They're getting a big thumbs up from me for all their, all their updates. Absolutely. Okay. Many thanks indeed for your comments. Some more comments coming in as we speak, which uh, Krishna may just want to glance down at. Uh, but uh, otherwise, thank you so much indeed for uh, for watching. Uh, this is Peter Stewart and Krishna Day, episode 130 of Live Stream Insiders. And we'll be back in another seven days to give you another update of what's been happening in the world of live streaming, a bit of tech news, some case studies, uh, and also any updates to any of the apps. Some uh, oh, over the years, we've talked about new ones that have come into the fold and other ones which have left and died a bit of a death as well. And uh, sometimes some unexpected things happen as well, like uh, uh, talking about other uh, live streamers and the kind of kit they use. And I'll let you into a bit of a secret. You see this hand here. Well, actually, it's holding on to my backdrop because I suddenly heard that it started to fall down while Krishna was talking. So it's probably time we go before my arm gets tired and my whole set collapses. Have a great seven days. Live stream Insiders is back next Sunday at the same time. Take care. Bye bye.